Welcome to the Success in Africa podcast with Dr. Modupe, your weekly dose of leadership vitamins to make you successful in Africa. Hello and welcome to the Success in Africa podcast episode 14. My name is Dr. Modupe Telopias and I am a scholar and practitioner of leadership and organizational development. Simply put, I study what makes people successful. I have been studying this for three decades with a particular focus on people in Africa. And in this podcast, I will share stories, lessons, and insights about people having success in Africa. Why this podcast? Because I am sick and tired of Africa being the poorest continent in the world. We are blessed with the greatest resource, young people. Africa will soon have the largest number of working age people in the world. And when these people achieve success, Africa's wealth will be unparalleled. Why? Because I don't know of too many Africans whose goal in life it is to die poor. Success in life is simply the achievement of a predetermined goal. Whether that goal is creating employment for 10,000 people or transforming your country into a high-income country, this podcast has been created to help you to achieve it. So, if you are serious about achieving success in Africa, I want you to subscribe to this channel. If you like this video after you have watched it, please click the like button. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of BCA Leadership, the largest leadership enhancement company in Africa. If you have questions that you want me to answer after watching this video, log on to BCA Online, the link is on the screen, and post your questions there. That is where I will respond to your questions. Today, we're starting a new four-part series on entrepreneurial success in the business sector. Remember, there are entrepreneurs in the non-profit sector. You know, people who start new non-profit organizations like church founders, mosque founders, CBO founders. We will explore non-profit successes a month from now with a four-part series on success in the non-profit sector. But for this month, we are focusing on people having success in the for-profit or business sector. Today's success tip is based on resilience. And the key message is this, where there's a will, there's a way. Let me say it again. Where there's a will, there is a way. If your intention is to build a business in Africa, you are going to have to learn how to be resilient and determined and believe that there is a way that you can succeed despite many people, including loved ones, thinking that you are crazy or headed for failure. Among the many traits that successful entrepreneurs in Africa have in common is a penchant for hard work and a never give up attitude. One of the entrepreneurs who embodies this spirit is a successful businesswoman from Kenya. Her products are being drunk all over Africa and in Europe. They are marketed as Melvin's Tea, and the founder of the company is Flora Mutahi. Flora grew up in a traditional Kenyan home where the fathers expected their daughters to get an education so that they can get a nice, stable job and be more eligible for marriage. Flora knew from the time she was in university that she was not passionate about the traditional majors like engineering and medicine and accounting, etc. She was encouraged by her father to choose accounting as a major from which he claimed she could choose anything else later in life if she wanted to pivot. She eventually found her way for, to working for an audit firm. And it was while she was assigned to auditing a manufacturing company that she discovered her passion. She loved watching machines convert raw material into finished product. She realized that she was miserable, frankly, doing audits, and she quit her job telling her boss that 
Her heart was just not in it. He gave her one piece of advice that stuck with her. Whatever you do, Flora, create a legacy, something that will work without you. Her parents certainly did not understand why she would quit a good paying job in favor of the uncertainty of business, but Flora was adamant and said she would start her business. The problem was she did not know in what area. Then she discovered a problem worth solving. Right at the dinner table, the salt that the family was using in the home was always soggy and difficult to get out of the salt container. She started asking herself and others why, and she discovered that the salt that was commonly used was imported and often saddled with this problem, i.e. it was not free-flowing. She visited a local university professor whose expertise was food processing and asked him to teach her what he knew about processing free-flowing salt. The professor was incredulous. You want to go into salt making, young lady, and you know nothing about it? Yes, sir, she answered. And that is why I am here for you to teach me. Her persistence and the admiration of the professor, who agreed, and over the course of the next few weeks, he taught her what she needed to know. Now, she needed the money to buy the machine. She found out about a bank program run by a bank that is known today as ABSA that offered matching loans and she harassed her mother until her mother relented and loaned her the money without the consent or knowledge of her father. With her mother's money and the ABSA matching loan, she paid a deposit for the machine, got the machine. She paid a deposit for the packaging, got the packaging, and she started making the salt. Cash was tight which was why she could only pay the deposits. She would make the salt in the morning and then go around the shops selling and distributing it in the afternoon. She met with a lot of rejection and some acceptance. Her first customer was a small Asian store. After a few weeks getting her first customer, she then was able to convince a major retailer a major supermarket to buy her free-flowing salt. This was a big achievement, and she was excited, but she had a problem. They had ordered a huge amount, which she did not have the capital to produce. She promised to deliver it, and then went back to her mother to ask for more money, and she was promptly rejected. She asked a few others, and finally, the mother of one of her friends agreed to loan her the money that she needed, which she promised to pay back in two weeks. She got the money, bought the materials, made the order, delivered it, and then showed up the next day to collect her money, only to be told that the supermarket only pays after 90 days. Flora was aghast. 90 days? She was told, this is the supermarket policy for every supplier. But Flora was not your normal supplier. She went to the supermarket's finance and procurement offices every day for 10 days, harassing, pleading, cajoling, and guess what? She got her money 10 days after supplying them. She learned a valuable lesson in those early days that where there's a will, there's a way. And if anything is, in, is possible, if you are willing to ask and ask and ask for it and put in the effort to acquire the skills to do it. While she now had a clientele buying her salt and was making her salt and a little bit of money, she paid back her loans. Then Flora discovered that there was a lack of flavored tea in Kenya. At the time, most of the tea available was plain tea, partly because there was a monopoly on tea production in Kenya supported by government policy. So when this policy was changed, Flora decided to jump into the making of tea. Once again, she knew nothing about how to make tea, but she knew what to do. She contacted her food professor again, went through training, and started making her own tea, experimenting with mixing ginger with the tea and the resulting tea bags were liked by the customers who tried them. She then decided to attend a business development training program called Business Growth, 
because she recognized that while she had learned how to manufacture the products, there was a lot that she did not know about running a business. Once again, she did not have the money for it, but she cajoled the organizers into letting her in with just a small deposit paid and the promise to pay the balance later. This program helped her to understand costing, sales, marketing, logistics, and other important areas of business that she needed to make her business successful. This knowledge she then parlayed into growing her fledgling business into a big business that today is worth millions of dollars and employs almost a hundred people. See, Flora is living proof, living proof that the fact that when you want to succeed in a business, you have to be crazy enough to believe. You have to be passionate enough to persevere. You have to be disciplined enough to work hard and be open to learning. Flora succeeded in creating a business, making products that she did not learn about in university or high school, drawing on knowledge that she acquired outside of formal schooling. She succeeded despite friends and loved ones telling her that she was not going to succeed, despite big companies telling her that it was impossible, and despite not having enough money at the start. To be successful as an entrepreneur in Africa requires that characteristic that is best described in the title of this episode. Where there's a will, there is a way. Where there's a will, there is a way. This brings us to the end of our podcast today. I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about success in Africa in the entrepreneurial leadership space with me. I look forward to your comments and feedback about the podcast. Next week, we will continue with our series on success in entrepreneurial leadership in Africa. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Tell your friends about it. Together, we can transform our beloved continent. See you next week. Tomorrow belongs to those people who prepare for it today. See you next week.